would like to welcome you Mahesh to ATA GTR 2020 day 2 track 2 Mahesh has never run away from challenges and has always embraced challenges with open arms since he believes that challenges are uh, what can shape a person and provide the opportunities to grow uh, he would be speaking on the topic shift testing left right left what to you mahesh i think we are still 5 minutes i mahesh was here uh, hi mahesh, yeah yeah good yeah. all right yeah. can you hear me and see me yeah. uh, maybe you need to yeah i can okay yeah. sorry yeah. i still thought uh, you know the session was going to start at 3:10 and uh, i just no we can out. we can wait in fact we have uh, five or six minutes so uh, that's where we 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 try to have a video chat uh, before we start i think people will come in at 3:10 so we have okay. got five or six minutes if we can have a general chat guys uh, if you are there we can again uh, have a quick chat among us uh, in general if you guys can do while mahesh we are waiting so yeah we can we can wait mahesh because i think a lot of people will change the tracks at exactly 3:10 the the timings are uh, across so let's hold on i would say we can wait for a few minutes before we start if that is okay or yeah, it, it's up to you if you want to start now you have got all the freedom to you will get extra time by the way that's absolutely fine i can wait okay so since i could see on uh, uh your your interests point of view mahesh you mentioned about the challenges so could you please elaborate on this particular thing like how how you think about the challenges and then probably that would help us to bring in some insights <laughs> you mean challenges about shift test is a shift uh, testing left right yeah anything you would like to share based upon your experiences so far uh i mean that's something i'll be walking through this slide so i mean to this mm -hmm. whole presentation uh, i mean to give a quick hint right uh, uh you know many people and companies you know they focus more heavily on shift left and they tend to ignore on um, you know shift right they think you know if they have shift left uh, you know that's all they need and uh, to be successful and they completely ignore uh, shift right so that's where my topic is going to be you know emphasizing how much important shift left and shift right is and how they both have to work together uh, uh, so that's where uh, you know my uh, focus is going to be today and also talking about you know some of the challenges you know it could be challenges with uh, you know people it could be challenges with the mindset they have it could be challenges with the process it could be challenges with the tooling you know the right uh, way to do you know uh, sometimes if you don't really do shift left and shift right in a proper way it could backfire and it could cause a lot of uh, you know disturbances it could uh, you know give a lot of false alarms and there could be a lot of problems so that's where uh, you know, my focus and emphasis would be today good to know that there could be problems related to the new normal also remote yeah right related. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. So, so Mahesh, where are you from? Uh, would you like to share uh, your uh, uh, background and maybe a little bit about yourself while people join? Sure. Uh, I'm basically from Bangalore. Uh, I'm, I was born and brought up here. Uh, I mean, uh, all my parents, great great friends, grandfathers, everybody here from uh, Bangalore. So we are we are local people here. Uh, I did my engineering from Bangalore. I got my first job in Bangalore. Uh, <laughs> I've been uh, I've been in the industry for the last 18 years now. Uh, you know, majority of my experience is on the engineering manager uh, management side. Uh, I've been uh, you know uh, glad that I have uh, enough opportunities to work on various uh, testing areas, uh, including performance engineering. uh accessibility testing automation testing functional testing exploratory testing uh uh so uh i'm fortunate enough to be presented with various set of opportunities you know i'm, I'm fortunate enough to have worked in various companies like i worked in uh, product based companies service based companies i worked with uh, Action here I work with Sony uh, I'm currently working with Elution which is a higher education product based company uh, 
where we work on a lot of uh, you know technology tools a lot of innovation where companies you know uh, really emphasize and uh, you know uh, foster innovation uh, on the testing area not just in the development uh, so there's a lot of things that we do today so uh, that's that's a bit of a background about me very nice in fact very very nice to know about the entire background so uh, i think we are one minute uh, before time so if we probably are very glad to have you with us and uh, you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you so much for being with us, Mahesh. Really appreciate your presence. Same here. I mean, thank you very much for providing all the opportunity and uh, uh, thank you, Aditya and the team. I'm sorry, I just know Aditya because, you know, I keep hearing about Aditya from Bridges. So that's how I know Aditya, but I would so love... That is so unfortunate. I think uh, it's not about me. It's about all the volunteers who are running. I'm just being one of them. Uh, so right, in this, right. yeah, we should know more about Ritu Raj and Harpreet. Maybe that's why uh, I thought that uh, yeah, we all are there together. In fact, we would love to have uh, all of you work with us in the in the team and see how we can take this journey ahead with uh, ATA and GTR. Yeah, I mean, just because I do not know them doesn't mean yeah. that you know they are less important and their contribution yeah. uh, any any way less. It's just unfortunate that I do not know everyone of them. <laughs> no, no, I agree. So yeah, I think uh, this uh, conference will give us opportunity. So we are again glad uh, you can start anytime. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So I'll get started here. Uh, good morning. Uh, good evening. And good afternoon, based on where you are located. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about a topic called shift testing left, right, left. So that the way I'm going to be doing this presentation is going to be in form of a story. So I'm going to be telling you a story. I'm going to be narrating a story. Hopefully that should make it a uh, little interesting. Uh, with that, let's start the story. So once upon a time, you know, there was this company called uh, you know, Duper Technologies. So Duper Technologies were, uh, you know, heavily into retail. Uh, you know, they had online presence. Uh, they were, uh, they, they held the number one spot in the market for a very long time. They were very, doing very good business. They were profitable. Customers were happy. Employees in the company were happy. Everything was going, you know, very well. Uh, over, over a period of time, uh, you know, they started losing customers, the profits started declining, and, uh, you know, uh, the products were not successful, and things were not really going well. So they got really, uh, you know, worried because they were unable to compete in the market, and they started, uh, you know, making some realignments. They started focusing on uh, uh, you know, a lot of other things. They started investing on sales and marketing, but nothing was really helping them out. So they decided to hire uh, you know, a bunch of smart folks. Uh, so they got on board a bunch of smart folks uh, who started, uh, you know, reviewing retrospective, who started uh, you know, analyzing things, you know, what, what's going on, where things are really uh, impacting, where is it failing. So based on multiple brainstorming meetings, you know, they concluded that uh, you know, there, the, these couple of reasons were contributing to the overall uh, you know, company uh, failing and the products uh, failing. So some of the reasons were attributed to, you know, quality testing and not given uh, enough importance. There were a lot of, uh, you know, bugs that were getting leaked into production environment. Uh, there were, uh, you know, delays in the releases which contributed to decrease in uh, profitability and losing stake in the market. Uh, so, uh, uh, and also they didn't have, uh, you know, DevOps, Cloud, Agile to really foster uh, you know, quick releases and flexibility around, uh, you know, development and whatnot. So those were some of the reasons that uh, they came up with. And today this story is going to focus on extensively on one of the many reasons that they identified. It's the story around a shift uh, testing left, right, left, and uh, how it helped this company overcome the problem that they had. Uh, we have two heroes uh, in our story, in this story. So the hero, number one, shift left, another hero, uh, shift right. So these are our uh, you know, leading characters of uh, today's story. Uh, I'll quickly you know, talk about uh, both of our heroes. Uh, as you all know that uh, you know, in today's uh, modern software development uh, you know, with Agile, you know, it's an infinite loop of developing small chunk of uh, you know, features and releasing products, right? 
So shift left, shift left is all about you know testing early, testing everywhere, testing continuously until the product gets released. So shift left focus would focus on you know problem uh, prevention. Uh, you know it would focus on early uh, you know uh, early testing, continuous testing, providing the you know continuous and consistent feedback uh, that could help with the overall quality. Uh, shift right, our other hero, uh, you know, shift right is all about uh, you know testing on pre-prod and testing mostly on a production environment. Uh, shift right is not just about testing. Shift right is about you know testing. Shift, shift right is about monitoring. Shift right is about collecting data for uh, uh, you know making visualization, recording, and dashboard. Uh, people generally are aware of uh, you know our first hero shift left and they tend to ignore uh, shift right. Uh, so that's the story. Uh, that's the introduction to our uh, heroes. So let's talk more about uh, you know both of our heroes, you know, uh, and uh, how they started, uh, you know, uh, taking up the responsibility to uh, work towards solving the problem. So shift left, uh, you know, as you all know that uh, you know bugs, uh, if they are found later in the development cycle, uh, you know, it's always going to be expensive, right? If if a bug is found in a production environment compared to development environment, you know, the cost of the bug is going to be uh, highly expensive, right? Uh, the, uh, I can quote two Q, uh, two uh, sorry two quick examples on how expensive they could be. Uh, there was a one security bug that was found in the mission critical product in a banking domain, you know, which wrecked havoc, uh, you know, to the end user, to the business, to the product developers, testers, and everybody. Uh, and uh, Another uh, bug that was found in the production, which was related to uh, performance testing, and it was a performance defect. So that tend to be so expensive that uh, you know it required a lot of uh, you know design changes, architecture changes. Uh, it only meant a lot of changes to the code. It only meant a lot of work to developers, testers, BAs, product owners, and everybody. Right. So that's where uh, you know early testing is very very important, and uh, uh, one of our famous quote, which we all know, problem prevention is better than cure. Right. So that's uh, that's the importance with uh, you know, shift left. Uh, shift left. You know we can start. Uh, you know right from the requirement stage. Uh, you know we can start. Uh, you know right from uh, right from the you know, moment user stories get defined. You know. Uh, we could look at the definition of done in terms of testing of the user stories. We could talk about testability. You know, how do we ensure we have the testability aspect of each of the user stories? Uh, and also performance testing, right? I mean, a lot of people think that uh, you know, performance testing cannot be conducted until the product is ready. Uh, but that's a big myth. Performance testing can be started as soon as the components and services are ready. Uh, you know, you could actually start, uh, you know, conducting load test at the service layer, at the component layer, where you could, uh, you know, run load test, monitor how the component is behaving. You can profile the component in terms of whether it has any uh, memory leak. How does the CPU looks like? How does the, you know, uh, physical memory? Is the thread contention problem? You know, um, you know, so all those JVM profiling can be done at the component level. Likewise, you know, on the database, you know, we could pull AWR report to, uh, you know, look if there are any, you know, problems with the query, if there are any problems with the indexing, you know, if there are any other problems in the database, right? So a lot of tools like, you know, App Dynamics, Datadog, uh, you know, JRocket, Glowroot, Visual UPM, uh, you know, your kit. So there are tons and tons of open source and uh, commercial tools that can uh, help with early performance testing. And not just with performance testing, uh, you know, even accessibility can be uh, you know, conducted at the unit testing level. So uh, accessibility testing is one of the highly neglected testing type, you know, with the NPM packages, with tools like Lighthouse, L11P, you know, we could use those tools to start, uh, you know, developers start write, writing code to accessibility testing at the very, very early stages, I mean, at the unit level. Uh, TDD, BDD, and other practices also help us to get started with, uh, you know, early testing. 
Swift left can mitigate the risk and uh, contribute to the overall product success if done in a you know, right way. Now, Swift left is all about you know early continuous faster feedback loop, which is extremely helpful for Dev, uh, B, and other groups to make the product uh, you know, successful. Uh, to actually embark on the journey of uh, you know Swift left, it's important that we have uh, you know the right process it, it's important that we bring in the you know mindset change you know developers and other groups should not think that you know shift left is an overhead and shift left is a job of uh, you know one particular group instead you know everybody we should get buy-in from everybody everybody should be on the same page we all have to work as one single group you know who would uh, uh, think about shift left uh, and uh, you know shift left should we work towards making the product uh, you know successful uh, and also it's important that uh, you know we have the right set of tools uh, you know to work on uh, shift left like you know having static code analyzers which will help analyze the code uh, you know having uh, tools like sonar cube which could uh, which would help us uh, with the code coverage uh, there are tools, uh, there are very smart tools these days. I mean, one of the tools that I would like to highlight here is C-Light. Uh, C-Light is a tool which would help with, uh, you know, uh, which would help with measuring the coverage of all type of tests like performance, automation, exploratory testing, unit testing, and everything. Uh, one of the smart feature of uh, tools like C-Light are as soon as you, uh, as soon as you, uh, check in some code in a git it can automatically tell you, you know how much coverage you would have uh, from the existing test and uh, how much more coverage you would need to actually test the new uh, code that you checked in right uh, and also uh, cloud technology like google, like uh, google uh, azure and aws are very much needed to make shift left successful uh, because one of the main challenges that we have is, uh, you know, test infrastructure. Test and infrastructure is still a biggest challenge that a lot of companies and teams have. Uh, I've actually done a talk, another talk, where, uh, you know, uh, using cloud technology, uh, you know, any tester can build any testing environment with single click of a button. So AWS Cloud uh, is equally important to make shift left, uh, you know, successful. Lastly, shift left should not be seen as a replacement or automating 100% testing. Shift left need to be looked at, looked as uh, you know, something which can help uh, with testing, something which can make the testing better, and at the same time allow and provide testers the required time to conduct exploratory testing and bring in the true craftsmanship. Uh, about our other hero, Shift Right. Uh, Shift Right has three important parts: uh, you know, monitoring, capturing data, and testing. Uh, we never know how a product would behave until a product gets deployed into production. Uh, so Shift Right is all about uh, you know production environment. Uh, you know, a lot of things like what is going on in the production, how is the quality of the product, how is the system doing, are customer facing any problems. Uh, you know, uh, and also continuous monitoring. Uh, we we need to have the right set of tools uh, tools to you know carry out uh, continuous monitoring, like you know Datadog, Splunk, Aptonomics, Dynatrace, and many others. Uh, we also need to have a mechanism to you know uh, have the data aggregation done, have dashboards and visualization created so that you know uh, teams can start getting benefit out of the monitoring uh, data. Uh, we could also have alerts created with the monitoring, what is normal, what is abnormal, and also we could, uh, you know, tag auto healing features with uh, you know, alerts, which could uh, you know, trigger and fix some of the problems. Uh, testing is pro testing in production. In a lot of companies, are doing testing in production. There are a lot of benefits. There are a lot of advantages. You know, uh, it's uh, it's it's very important in some of the uh, in scenarios and situations. Uh, why do people test in production? People do test in production because you know there are a lot of challenges when we have to test, uh, you know, in in, in our test environment. Uh, you know, we would not have the right uh, scaled environment. We would have we would not have the exact copy in terms of the configuration, uh, you know, size scaling uh, in terms of uh, a production environment compared to test environment. Uh, we would not have the right volume of data. We would not have the right realistic data. So that's where you know, testing in production becomes very important. 
Uh, some of the testing, like blue-green deployments, happen in testing. You know, uh, blue-green uh, deployment is where uh, you know you would have blue and green environment, exact uh, in a replica, which is being uh, uh, in a routed uh, traffic is being routed by load balancer at route 53, where uh, traffic gets routed to blue and green uh, environments at the same time. So when you have a new environment that you need to deploy, you know, you directly deploy it on the green environment. Uh, you carry out testing and ensure everything looks good and you have the confidence to release it. So once you have that, you release it. After that, uh, you know, real users start, uh, you start, you know, diverting a certain amount of certain percentage of traffic to the green environment. So end users start uh, using the green environment. So once uh, everything looks good on the green environment, you can completely shut down the blue environment. Again, using the Route 53 and the Road Balancer, so that way your green environment becomes the new production environment. So that's how uh, you know testing in production happens today. And also there are um, you know feature toggle, A to B testing, canary releases that happens uh, you know in terms of testing in production. Uh, learning from production, you know, there's a lot to learn from production. You know, it, it's a gold mine. I would call it. A, a, I would call it as a gold mine because you have tons and tons of information that you can you know learn out of production. Imagine the product uh, you know which which is very legacy and uh, you know uh, the product does not have conducted uh, any performance test, any accessibility test, any cross browser or cross platform test, right? Uh, if you have the right tools that can be deployed on production environment, you could create a baseline for those performance tests, for those accessibility tests, for those uh, uh, automation test, UI automation tests, or uh, you know any other test step, right? So that baseline, you could directly bring it back to R and D to the test testing team, and uh, you know you can build on top of it. So that's how you know that, uh, learning and testing in production might also solve a lot of our testing depth. Uh, shift rate can also provide requirements for accessibility testing. It can provide cross browser requirements, cross platform requirements, per performance testing requirements. Uh, again, shift right uh, is all about having the right uh, process, having the right people, and uh, having the right tools. Uh, we carry out we we do carry out a lot of performance testing in production. Uh, you know, uh, performance testing uh, requirements are a little uh, challenging and doubting because you know you need uh, sometimes it's hard to get the TPS, sometimes it's hard to get the number of concurrent users. You know, a lot of requirements uh, for performance testing is really challenging. So, uh, conducting them on performance, uh, conducting them on prod environment with the requirements deriving from prod uh, is actually a boon. Uh, observability, a new buzzword and a new kid on the block. So observability is all about, uh, you know, as your system become complex, distributed, you know, understanding the system is better. Uh, understanding the system, uh, yeah, you know, what is happening, uh, you know, what is going wrong, uh, what is normal, what is not normal. For example, if 1% of the user are experiencing problem, who are those 1%? So that's where observability, observability comes into picture. Observability and the monitoring, uh, you know, can work together and they complement each other. Uh, capturing data from shift left, uh, sorry, shift right, and uh, passing on to shift right is shift left is uh, equally important. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you know, it's going to improve our customer uh, experience. Uh, and moving on, uh, so. Now that uh, both our heroes have started working, so did it solve the problem? No, it did not solve the problem. Still, you know, it did not solve the problem. Still, because you know, both of them are working in silos. Both of them are working in isolation. They have their ego, ego egoistic behavior that you know they can only solve the problem. Right? Because you know, you will not be able to catch all the defects in pre-prod with shift left. Likewise, you know, if you really uh, relate solely on shift right testing, you won't find out problems. Uh, you know, until software is in the production. Uh, so now that uh, you know, why, okay. So why shift left and shift right alone would not solve the problem? You know, I'll, I'll talk about uh, real quick about them. So shift left, you know, uh, requires you know well-defined process, right set of tools. Uh, you know, developers and other groups might not be motivated if you don't plan and do it in a you know right way. Uh, you know, we need to address uh, you know, some of the challenges like, you know, you don't have insight into real users, real time scenarios, real time of data. You know, a lot of data in, is ambiguous and unavailable. Uh, 
you know, uh, and also, you know, we don't have infrastructure and environment like fraud and, uh, you know, unstable environment. You know, you know, sometimes developers and other groups might think it's an over it. Right. So uh, there's a lot of challenges. I mean, shift left cannot work the way we think uh, it would work. So there are a lot of challenges. Uh, also, with shift right, you know, we need to establish the right process for shift right. You need to have the right tools, and uh, you know, without shift left, you know, shift right cannot sustain. I mean, if you if you stop doing shift left, and uh, if you tell I'm going to focus only on shift right, that's not going to work because you're going to find a lot of defects in a shift right, right? Uh, and also, you know, you you would be using a lot of automation scripts. You would be using performance scripts. You would be using a lot of testing assets. The strategy techniques from you know, from shift left to conduct testing in shift right. Uh, so shift right cannot provide all the coverage the product needs, though it can provide uh, you know some coverage. Now that both heroes, you know, they both have understood that you know uh, they need to support each other, they need to stay together, you know, they need to work uh, you know together. So they started working together. Uh, you know what they started doing was you know shift right our hero shift right it started capturing all the data from production you know how real users are using the environment what kind of critical uh, critical scenarios are uh, being used in the prod what are the frequently used uh, you know, scenarios in the prod what kind of data is being used in the prod uh, so all those uh, you know information was uh, 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 was start, was pushed back from uh, you know shift right to shift left. So our hero shift right started providing them to uh, shift left, and uh, shift left started uh, you know consuming that data, and uh, you know they started getting better and better. They the testing became more effective because they started using getting the whole uh, uh, you know realistic uh, data from uh, shift right. You know BAPO testers, developers, managers, everybody started uh, you know making use of the data and the metrics that uh, were captured. Uh, again, we need to have a you know solution in place where uh, you know you capture the data from production, convert them into more meaningful metrics that can be consumed back by uh, shift left. Uh, you know, for example, and the performance testing, for example, and the performance testing side. Uh, you know, it would help refine the performance testing requirements. You know, you would get more uh, realistic workload mixes, more realistic TPS, and other uh, you know requirements. Likewise, on the automation side, it helped it helped them improvise and create rob robust automation test suite. Uh, you know, cross platform, you know, cross uh, cross platform, mobile mobile uh, accessibility. Uh, the browser, all those requirements started coming from shift right to shift left, and the shift left started to get benefit out of that. Uh, what is important uh, is, uh, you know, uh, it's not about how we test the product. It's also important to understand how would the product get tested. So that's where, you know, shift right and shift left working together is going to be very important. And also, you know, uh, there are ways where we can capture the entire workload in the uh, shift right that is on the prod, and which which can be replayed back on the test environment. Uh, you know, there are also ways to divert traffic that comes to prod environment, uh, you know, at the same time to prod environment and test environment. So that way, you know, you would get to know uh, how is your uh, uh, you know, current code behaving and how is your new code behaving and uh, and whatnot. So both working together can provide broader test coverage, can make the overall testing efficient and improve the product quality. Okay, so how do we do uh, shift right? Uh, shift right can be done effectively by bringing in the right set of tools. You know, the right set of tools, I mean, you know, tools like Datadog, Aptanamic, Dynatrace, uh, and you need to have right mechanism of you know tracing and uh, you know, extracting from the logs and to build uh, you know metrics and dashboard uh, which can be converted uh, and consumed by you know early testing or the shift left. Uh, you should also uh, have the right mindset. You should have also have uh, you know cultural shift and you know, that's going to need uh, to uh, adopt uh, shift right. Uh, and also, cloud is a very, very important piece uh, in the overall uh, you know, shift, right? Uh, you know, like I said, you know, cloud has the power and flexibility to make uh, shift, right, uh, successful. Uh, you can also use a lot of you know, testing assets 
on tools from shift right, shift left to shift right. Uh, so uh, climax, uh, both the heroes started working together, and uh, you know the problem was definitely solved. You know there was no more power. You know they they both understood that you know they had to collaborate and work together. Uh, is the problem solved? Yes, of course the problem is solved. I mean now that uh, you know both of them are working together, you know all the problems vanished. Uh, story conclusion, uh, you know, shift left and right, uh, both are equally important. You know, they should not work with silos or uh, we should not just have shift left or shift left, you know, shift right, both are equally important. People, process and tools are very important. And, uh, you know, feedback loop should be continuous, iterative, real time. Uh, lastly, I want to emphasize again, shift right is indeed very important. Quick credits to present ago for PPT and images and illusion and team which I'm currently working and this is about me. With that, I'm uh, I've done with my presentation and happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, Manish. So, Riturat, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, so, uh, when we talk about shift left and shift right, Mahesh, uh, uh, in 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 re reality terms, uh, uh, which are the tools which you have uh, yourself used in getting? Like I really was uh, intrigued by the idea, and that is a great slide where you said that you can actually bring the data back into the shift left. So I would like to hear uh, your uh, thoughts on how you were able to consume that uh, in a real life scenario, in in a case study kind of an example, if you can, Mahesh. So there are tools like uh, you know Datadog, AppDynamics, and other uh, uh, Dynatrace, and other bunch of commercial tools which can actually you know mine, extract the data, and convert into the meaningful uh, metrics that can be consumed by shift left. And also you know I've been working on this uh, concept where uh, you know we all talk about data lake from you know a development perspective, but we rarely talk about data lake from testing perspective. So we are trying to build a data lake in uh, both. R&D and also we are trying to build a data lake out of the production. So what I mean is the data lake would uh, have data that would be pushed from various kind of testing. It could be performance, security, accessibility, unit, integration, end to end. So all the data gets dumped into data lake. And uh, you know once you have this data lake, you can build a lot of AI and ML solutions to do and to you know basically you know get a lot of information. Sky is the limit. Uh, you know, and what you would, uh, what would, what you would do, and likewise, you know, the production data can also be pushed into its own data lake and could be consumed. No, I completely agree that uh, it should be done. Uh, and uh, in our keynote session, also, um, I think Amit Basin was talking about uh, the user experience and how do you consume that uh, unstructured data. So we talk about this uh, huge amount or volume of data that we are generating, and 90% of that is unstructured. But from a testing point of view, uh, how do we tap that? I do understand that we may capture it uh, using some kind of tools. Very easy to do that. But from when we talk about consumption, have you done something like that uh, and throw some light? Yes, this is the data that was generated and this is how it helped in, in a real problem statement. It's it's not really different from the data lake concept of development, how it can be done. For example, uh, you know, right now we are we heavily use AWS Cloud. So AWS Cloud has uh, you know services like Amazon S3. So Amazon S3 can uh, receive both uh, you know unstructured and structured data. You can just dump uh, you know those data on Amazon S3. So once you dump those data, there are services like Athena and there are you know other services that we can write, which would go through all the stu structured and unstructured data, and you could uh, you know push it back to uh, you know DynamoDB or NoSQL da database, or you could continue to leverage Amazon S3 to run uh, you know queries on top of that you know build dashboards using uh, you know AWS Kinesis and whatnot. So there are bunch of AWS resources that can actually help you get started uh, you know with those flat structured or unstructured structured or unstructured data files yeah no I, excellent great thoughts guys anybody has any questions we can take it here because i think uh, slido does not i don't know yeah there are there are some questions uh, go ahead uh, uh, rituraj you can actually take yeah. those questions yeah yeah so there is one question where rasika is asking that 
it is observed the issue which is observed in production is not reproducible in test and we don't have access to the customer environment as well how to handle this situation so we don't have the access to the production environment and then we want to reproduce that test in staging or qa that's what she's asking right i mean a lot of times you know we would not have access to a customer environment so one right. way to really work is you know work with the ops team to figure out a way how we could actually scrub the data and uh, you know get the require vital metrics that is needed from prod uh, you know back to r and d uh, you know to make that happen so a lot of times what we do is uh, you know we take copies of the database i mean uh, uh, the the copies of the database has to go to security audit has to be scrubbed has to undergo all the process that is needed right uh, so we need to figure out a way in terms of uh, Uh, you know getting that process uh, in place or we need to figure out an other way to make that metrics and data available uh, you know without actually exposing all of the production data so a better alignment with the ops team to get those things right. done is what you yeah. are saying yeah okay. good uh, i think we still have 5 minutes to go we can take a couple of questions when to decide that it is the time to move from left to right and right to left mm -hmm. it's not about time i mean like i said it's a continuous iterative process i mean you uh, you have requirements you develop you know you continuously test you continuously deploy you know you get the feedback you know you continue right i mean that has to be a continuous iterative cycle you just cannot decide you know uh, i'm going to do shift left now tomorrow i'm going to do shift right i mean you need to establish a process such that it's continuous consistent and iterative so uh, mahesh there is another question on 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 this corollary here when we talk about basically so much technology and tools being used uh, would it basically make it mandatory for people to uh, start using all these in their day to day life what is your opinion on that yeah some of the tools are definitely needed you know like i said you know we, we would obviously have not, we would obviously not have the money time and effort to put in to build the tools so that's where and also we don't want to reinvent the wheel right so that's where you know we usually get uh, uh, you know we we usually start looking at the tools right you know some of the tools are becomes a necessity uh you know because you know it can be easily consumed you know it it gets it, it helps us to get started very quickly right but having said that you know it's not that we always have to go and purchase a commercial tool there are always uh, you know options available in form of open source tools where you can you know look at open source tool customize and build on top of that but uh, uh, but definitely tools are very important and uh, what kind of tools and uh, what type of tools would entirely depend on your uh, you know, product requirements and many other factors okay great thanks rituraj you can take other questions yeah yeah uh, one more is getting multiple releases and different product environment for our various customers with the short period of time we get uh, those environments and that to with the setup of different servers and environment we test in we get the different varieties of defects too so in this scenario how can we decide which way we would like to go ahead how can we improve on the quality coverage uh let me read through that question one more time getting multiple releases and different product environments for various customers with short period of time we get different servers and environment <laughs> So ideally, the pipeline has to be. I mean, if we are talking about one product, right? I mean, one product should ideally have one pipeline created. I know it's a challenge. I know it's uh, it's not possible. I mean, it, it's easy to say that you know we should have one pipeline, right? But that's not really a possibility. But uh, there are two options. I mean, the first one, uh, try to get one. single pipeline per product you know which would uh, the pipeline would look more or less similar uh, you know like a prod environment i mean the, there should not be really much of a difference between you know the dev test and the prod environment the pipeline has to be same and also with today's tools and technology right uh, infrastructure and environment is actually maintained as a code right uh, so everything is maintained as a code so you just click a button and you have a, your full blown environment test environment to carry your testing right 
so once you have the environment i mean it's up to you you know whether you want to do shift left whether you want to do shift right or whether you want to do you know some other quality coverage or testing or what not right so uh, it's all about uh, you know it's all about the environment it's all about the process and the tools that uh, that are available today so if you can make a charge like i said have that one single pipeline created that can help between both uh, you know uh, both like prod like environment or qa dev like environment uh, and uh, you know and also have uh, tools and technology that can help maintain uh, infrastructure as a code so that uh, creating environment should be very easy okay Thank you so much for all those wonderful insights, Mahesh, and uh, it was great to have you with us on our conference. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you.